I've had some quirks to work out. Uh, I didn't have Ethernet. Ethernet, Ethernet. I didn't have Ethernet support, but the most important thing was the anti feature called Secure Mode. Hey, I'm Anfa. Welcome to another monthly live stream. Today we're going to be doing something way different than anything I've done previously on live streams or otherwise. We're going to do a remix, but not just a remix. <laughs> like we're not just going to take a project that um, we have before and just modify it. No, we have stems, which were created by my lo-fi who is a prevalent open source music producer. And the stems were created with Z-Rhythm, which, which I've featured on this show before. 
so we're we've got the stems in Ardor, and today with John the Bard, we're going to um, see what we can do with these stems inside of Ardor to give this track a new uh, a new look, a new feel, uh, make it something different. By the way, can anybody hear me? Because, <laughs> you know, I made this nice introduction and maybe that just went into nothing. I, I think, I think it works. <laughs> Lifeline says, where's the dude? I don't know, where's the dude? What dude? This can't be good for me, but I feel great. Rob Vanderberg says, Nilsi, no kicks in. I'm out. Oh, this doesn't mean I'm not going to synthesize a kick, man. <laughs> you bet I will. What else am I going to do? This is a monthly live stream. I need to synthesize my kick. Otherwise, I'll be sick. <sighs> John, are you ready? Let's go. Please welcome John the Bard, doing, my co-host. John, I liked it's that not reference your, earlier. It's not your first <laughs> time. I think you're missing uh, one light because it's kind of dark in there. Oh, maybe. <laughs> hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if my. Is it possible? I could open the window for more light. <laughs> Let's open the window for more light. No, wait. I can. I can do it in software. Let's try doing it in software. <laughs> uh, we live in the future. I can open your window in software. There's an app for that. Oh, I know. Maybe something. Yeah, I don't know. If it's, I said drop my camera and GVC real fast, that's fine. No, I think it's going to be fine. Um, Perfect. I hope I'm not going to clip you too much. Okay, I think it's better. Before, yeah, after, nice before, thing. after. Noise. Okay, everybody ready? Can you hear it? They want me... Rob says <laughs> me a bit louder. I think that's on your end you'll have to do. I can up my volume, but you're Actually, probably better you're to do it. Actually, 100%. I can make myself quieter, right. though. Here, I'll make I myself turn quieter. Me up. Uh, I'll, I'm turning right, I'll myself down. i leave it down. as is before. I think we're on... Slightly equal, similar levels. I can hear I'll myself a little again. bit from your side. By the way, Rob Bonnerberg says you practiced this for three hours. Yes, we did. But no, I think what happened mm. is I opened the window in my studio, and I think the camera changed itself because I just cannot convince my camera to not do some auto stuff. So I think it's related to me opening and closing my window. Because it's daytime, so it's nice and bright outside. Lifeline says there's a little bit of feedback echo. Yeah, I think it's from your end, John. There is. Let me... All my speakers are off. I think Let it's me... bleeding through the headphones, you know? Yeah, now we, I can hear it louder. Yeah, so I guess, I guess my mic is picking up my headphones. Maybe... Yeah, we need I, a gate. I don't know what to do about that. Just a gate. Yeah, I sh Let me edit my... Yeah, you're right. Let me edit my... Chain. You want to gate it, or I can gate it, too? I have a gate already open. I just... Oh, it's it's pretty quiet, that's why. My so... lo-fi says, shut down windows! <laughs> now it's better. All right, is the... Yeah, okay, cool, that should work, then. Also, it cuts, cuts off some um, background noise that was coming from your end that I didn't realize was coming until you shut it off. <laughs> yeah, this has been the downside, switching to the uh, condenser instead of the... Oh, yeah, you can't see it on stream anymore. The condenser instead of my Dynamics mic, because you guys get a lot more sound. But it makes it easier for me. I don't have to lean just to be able to hear. So This is funny, because when I, I was experimenting and I got a Dynamic microphone for the same... for the sole purpose of not having to deal with too much room noise... Uh, Etc. But your gate is still a little bit 
not tight enough. It's letting stuff through. I can hear myself. But yeah. when I switch to the a condenser, I've found that there is not much difference. Actually, I'm getting a bit better sound because I have a lower noise floor. Because I had to crank the dynamic mic like a hundred percent preamp gain, and this thing is like at fifty percent. My dynamics add a hundred percent gain, basically. I just moved it a lot closer. Hopefully, then I can tighten the gate a lot. It doesn't look like I got much louder. Tighten the gate. Uh, I think it's better. I'm gonna speak a bit. All right. I'm gonna scream a bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't so, see it come through, so that seems fun. Yeah. As long as I'm audible. It looks like the gate's working correctly, so as long as I sound fine. You do. All right. I think the balance of levels is also okay. We're both peaking in the yellow, which is A-OK. -okay. <laughs> okay, Rob I think we're ready. still wants me louder. I think but we're ready to... As long as we're both audible. We'll see how it is in five minutes. If people are still complaining, we'll reassess. Yeah. Let me Sweet. maybe try so and make track. a tiny bit of room. Yep, so we had it. We have a track. I'm going to play it just like it is. These are stems that were exported from Zerivim. And a fellow musician, my lo-fi, has made this track. It was made as a joke. Um, because there's quite a lot of people from the Netherlands in this community and they like their sweets and um, sweet bread or whatever pudding brodje is. And there's also a joke because in one of noisiest track, uh, one of the noisiest tracks is called Lekka, which I believe means tasty in Dutch. So we kind of made some jokes about this and I recorded some voc vocal samples and my lo-fi took them and make a track out of that. But the track no longer is editable because it was made in Z-Rhythm Alpha. And uh, the, the project no longer loads in Z-Rhythm Beta. So all we have are the stems. It's great that my lo-fi exported the stems before that happened. And also it's nice that Z-Rhythm exports stems because I like, you can't take stuff for granted. Yeah, I didn't know but yeah, I didn't know either, but apparently it does, and here we are. It's been years, but I have had issues with DAWs doing stem exports, even proprietary ones, so it's good that it has it. Yeah, let's see what we can do. Let's just hear this track from start to finish and see what ha what is there, so everybody has, has an idea of what we're working in. Nils, he asks, the track is no longer edible. Yep. Oh Correct. no, now we're having food puns all over the chat. Damn, you got me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you Rob got me good. Because no, it's too old. <laughs> it's too old. The track's gone bad. Sour it's track. spoiled. Yep. <laughs> oh, we have a spam we bot. We to refrigerate it. Uh-oh. We have a spam bot. Yep. Good old spam bot. No more. By the way, my lo-fi, I made you a moderator, so if you see some spam, you can hit him with a hammer. The power lo-fi deserves. <laughs> yeah, I see Rob Vanderberg is also moderating. Thanks, guys. All righty. Perfect. Uh, I hope the levels aren't going to be too much, so let me start quiet and we'll turn it up. Somehow I don't think it comes through at all. Let me open the router. I hear it on my end. I don't know if it's coming through on their end. Let me unmute YouTube. Um, it should be coming in. Oh, wait a minute. I'm s yeah, my mistake. <laughs> I had all the faders down. That's a good word. Let the pudding road, yeah, flow through you. We gotta chop that up. 
Maybe we can find the original samples in Discord somewhere. Or on my disc. Louder. Making louder. Now it's on my end pretty comparable with your voice. Okay. Right. My lo fi says uh, no, side. no side chain the stems. Uh, okay, what should a side chain what? Set Sidechain okay. 100% of tracks to the kick. Let me see. We have track. We have uh, track names. So they are all prefixed with the name of the project. So maybe I can rename it. I'm curious if you have a good mass solution for this because the start of every STEM project that I've been working on. Yeah, is prefixed with I the do name. Exactly of the this. Yeah, this I do sucks. exactly this with like 70 stems and I'm just sitting there with like a video on in the background like, ah. Oh. Hey, maybe there's a this, uh, a script for that in Ardor. There's a bunch of scripts. Yeah, someone probably has written one. Remove redundant names or something like that. Yeah. We'll have to see. If not, I might make one. That's, I haven't done a Lua script for Ardor yet, but it seems cool. So I guess while you're renaming these, how do you typically do your side chaining? Do you just do a bus and route everything through it? Or do you do them per uh, track? That depends. Uh, sometimes I just, you know, make a single uh, submix bus that is called sidechain and I send everything that I want sidechain there. That's what I usually and, do. But sometimes I want things to be sidechain differently. So in, in many projects, I think I have both. So I have a sidechain bus but then I, some some uh, tracks have their own sidechain compressor, and they're directly take in the either either the kick drum or a specific sidechain trigger track that is not heard, but it's just used to trigger the sidechain compression. That sometimes yeah, I really like. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. That gives I, I was you just more... gonna say, oh, <laughs> oh crap! Sorry, <laughs> the, ti the timing is so bad. Yeah. No, I was gonna say I like the using um a little like a little sine wave beep as your side chain source. It's a lot more consistent because then you can just swap yeah. your like you like you're suggesting. You can just swap your kick sample out and stuff, and then you don't have to. Oh, how are you moving these? I always Con struggle to move stuff in our door. Control up and down arrow. Amazing. Mm, you can My also do some other things like. Like with Alt, you can move with Alt. Sh I don't know. Yeah, with Control, you can. <laughs> I love how you can play it in reverse. That's the weirdest yeah. feature. Shift up and down. <laughs> Ardor, Thank you, Ardor, Ardor has some interesting features. Yeah. Okay, so we have the track re tracks renamed. I want to thank group the, the drums. The moderators surely... demand a new kick, so that'll have to be yes. where we start. Uh, absolutely, we're going to synthesize a new kick. <laughs> and... <laughs> Step one. Step one. Make we don't even need to hear the stems. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's make a group for drums. Oh, what they do? I think I clicked something or something triggered weirdly. Okay. So I'm going to mute solo the drums and maybe select all of them and hit F to maximize the selection vertically. Oh, there's lots of things I can do with these. Even with processing, so we do need to trigger a kick and synthesize a new one. So, oh yeah, if you do Alt and uh, wheel mouse wheel up or down you're going to change the size of the currently hovered track but sometimes it's easier to just tr drag and drop them oh, yeah, i'm going to if we have if we have all of the stems like this i could probably make a little cardinal patch so it'll extract gates out of these cuz i can just every time it passes a certain threshold trigger and then we have I'm pretty our sure list there's of triggers. 
I'm pretty sure there's a there's a plugin. I already think I used something like that. So we need to put a trigger. Yeah. It's a straightforward LSP concept. Trigger, I'd be shocked. Yep. Uh, LSP yeah, trigger. Perfect. Mono. Um, he beat me to it. I don't think I used the LSP one. Let's see what it does, how it looks. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, there's a little threshold. So probably every time it passes that, it triggers. Maybe I'm going to route. How am I going to do this? I think I'm going to take the pin connections of this thing. Oh, wait. This is. Ah, uh, I think probably this is, want to use an insert. I think this is meant to play a sample. So. Oh, when it gets the trigger? Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it doesn't ah. It doesn't have a MIDI output. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what I don't want. <laughs> hmm. Okay. okay, let me switch there's, to the... Now there's I can another see one. better. There's another one called uh, Onset Trigger, Bass Drum Detection Mono by Robin Carrius. I don't know why only bass drum, you know, I'm like kind of... What, other drums won't work? Um, I have to assume they will. It's probably yeah. okay. This this has only it, MIDI outputs, so yeah. Perfect. So now I can. Mm, hmm. That's funny. It's giving two MIDI outs for each channel. Yeah, we don't need two instances. We need just one. And actually, I could. Okay, yeah, first crash of the there stream. There it goes. Dang it, Paul. So we found the pain point. Adding audio... Um, <laughs> audio channels to a MIDI track. Or a <laughs> huh. That's weird. I do that a lot. I, oh, I yeah. do all the crazy routing. So I don't know how I haven't encountered this bug. Like, some of my projects are insane with how much stuff's routed around. I'll send MIDI out of one track into another track to do audio, pro to create, like, another synth, and then send that back into the original track to mix in, like, a Carla routing. So I'm surprised I haven't hit stuff like this. I've realized we don't need to... Three hours of rehearsal. <laughs> Don't need to... Well, to be fair, rehearsal involved zero usage of our door. Wait, no, no. We loaded the stems into our door. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't actually do anything. Yeah, it was an X42 plugin. Oh, I'm gonna. I guess I should blame Robin version. instead of Paul. But it's just too easy to blame Paul. What are these? Just ah, I... Oh, I get this. Oh, oh, it adds a delay. Okay, so I'm not going to add a new MIDI track. Are you using Pipewire for your audio backend inside our door? That's why there's that's no why. align. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. No align is because of Pipewire. Yep. It's one of the few missing features. They don't report latency correctly. Yeah, something's not. Or maybe at all. There. Something isn't connected here. Oh. Oh, uh, I think I know why. Strict I.O. Yep. Yeah, but I don't hear anything. Maybe we have. It should. Maybe this. Maybe the filter is causing trouble? Maybe. Filter frequency, bandwidth. That oh, should man. be low enough. Oh, yeah. The bandwidth was so yeah. small. Oh, there we go. so it, it, has a, it has a bandpass filter, so it can actually detect polyphonic audio if we just, you know, tune into um, specific body frequencies of the, of the drums. We could distinguish a snare drum from a kick drum. I don't know why it's called bass drum detection. This is 
How high does the filter Versatile. frequency go? The top one. It's 300. That's why. 10. So we could get a snare. Snares are 250 at the highest. <laughs> yeah. I don't I mean, really we'll, know. Snares I will try to use it for a snare. <laughs> okay, yeah. let's make a kick drum. This is a little quiet. I'm going to have We're gonna to... We're going to be pitching down the hi-hats five octaves so that <laughs> so they get noticed. <laughs> oh, the looping in Ardor is a bit clicky. Okay. Yeah, no clicks now. So, my favorite thing, making kick drums. Everything is in the frequency envelope. Good bird sound. Yeah, but we want... This is dubstep, so we need something more dubstep -y. Maybe less of a this high transient. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, that should be okay. I'm gonna fade it out. That's funny. Here. It says it's 20 hertz at the bottom, but it's clearly just DCing. So does it go all the way <laughs> to zero? Yeah, interesting, right? <laughs> I think it does. <laughs> yeah. It goes to zero hertz. Oh, no, yeah, wait. There, there's... No, no, it's not. It's just, it, oh, if it's there is no point. Yeah, it ends. Mm, then it's if zero. There... That's funny. Oh, but if I go to minimum, it also like disappears. So I need to be above zero. I wonder, I wonder if you can add nice offset to like snares and stuff to get a really clippy transient, clicky transient. Anyway, oh. I'll mess with that sometime that isn't now. I don't know but if that's interesting. There is face control. Ah, uh, yeah, that'll do oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, now we have a clicky transient. Yep. Sweet. Let me add some noise. I know this is a kick drum, but believe me, even kick drums can benefit from some noise. Yeah, I like the uh, Brownian for a quick um, transient to kind of, it's functionally doing the phase offset this is, because I was using it to phase offset. My brain just never noticed that phase dial right there. Yeah, there's a little... <laughs> it's like Slider. right in front of me. <laughs> Maybe with too much of the noise. Oh, nice. Sometimes... Transvolt's here, too. Oh. The whole also... server crew is making it out. <sighs> oh, let's make the noise very loud at the very start. That's good. So, like, contributes to the transient. That'll sound good into some distortion. Yeah, let's let's do that. What should we do? Chow? Have you I love Zamtube for stuff. It's like just a tube, but it sounds so good. Zam, yeah, there it is. The Yep. Oh, uh, for some reason part of what I typed it to make it maybe I typed it badly. And then just click that insane button to get us started. <laughs> Cause I'm nuts, <laughs> so <laughs> and then and then let's go into danger, right? Yeah, exactly. Up oh, too much. We can hear it gets a real nice body. Yeah, I just love using tube on my kicks. I wish it had a dry wet though. Yeah, I often use uh, Carla and just route it. Although if you're crazy, you can do it in our door because you can load up a mixer and then just route the audio past the mixer or past the tube oh, and yeah. through the tube and then you mix it together. I've done that too. I was going to make a video on all this kind of stuff, but honestly, there's so much to figure out. I haven't had... I haven't to figure out about making yet. videos. <laughs> <laughs> Not just that, but routing everything. I wonder if I should That's nice be and deep. seeking this super deep bass in the kick, or we should reserve that for the sub bass. I think it'll work out fine. I feel like, although I feel like a lot of dubstep kicks are just noisy. I was listening to 2012, 2013 dubstep the other day, like you do. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of, 
There's not really much sub in the kicks. It's a lot of like a quick impact noise. So this is sounding pretty good so far. Yeah, let's see where that takes I us. I think that, that would poke through. I think we could duplicate the, the track to get the original kick also. This way, without like doing some yeah. crazy routing within the track and crashing ardor in the process. So I'm going to just duplicate this kick. And yeah, I insert after. I think yeah, it's yeah. the uh, I think it's pipe wire that's causing the issues with routing. Like I said, I haven't. Had, I've been using Alsa mainly instead of even using Jack. But so here I just for delete the, the Dion kick and trigger, and here we have the original. So we leave the processing we made for the new one. Let's see what that does. Oh, why is it sound nothing? Why do question. I hear? Why do I hear no things? Oh, now I hear things. There we go. <laughs> Interesting. If I high pass this to avoid any, maybe we can do something with that. Yeah, let's hear both together. Gives it a nice acoustic snap. Although I feel like yeah. the original kick plays a bit faster. Yeah, because we don't have transient first. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, of course. We don't have latency compensation, and we do have twenty-five milliseconds of latency because of the the trigger. That makes sense. That kind of sucks. Uh, so this is one thing that pipe wire doesn't do well. I wonder if we can Someone's do something. Someone's asking about your it. high DSP usage. Do you know? Uh, it's probably just because it's PipeWire's entire DSP. Uh, you know why there's high DSP usage? Uh, I'll, I'll show you why there's high DSP usage. This is why there's high DSP usage, because uh, <laughs> you're not hearing raw audio from my microphone and John's microphone. <laughs> there's lots of things going on in the background. Um, Um, maybe let's do LSP delay. There's some way of compensator. Compensator stereo. Let's see what that does. I think it's meant for... Oh, we could even use the phase. Yeah, we can use the phase analyzer, also from LSP, to precisely figure out the sync. Phase detector. So we can actually be sure that our kicks are in sync. Uh, so they are totally. That sounds crazy. Yeah. Oh man, it's it does sound crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's really something in the headphones. Yeah, because now I panned one kick left and one kick right. <laughs> I think. I think after. I think I should just mono the signal. Um, wait, there's error windows monitor monitoring, and you can make the thing mono. Yeah, you can also be sure how does it work in mono. So the worst. Delay offset sample seventy nine. Okay, it's it can't really make it make smile up, but or let's just dial in what we know, which is what twenty five milliseconds, right? Yeah, twenty five milliseconds. Okay, let's just dial that in. Monitoring. <laughs> okay, so I don't. I can't type in 25 milliseconds. I need to dial it in using the samples. Also, maybe I'm delaying the wrong thing. No, I'm not delaying the wrong thing. No, that sounds right. Oh, this sounds worse. Somehow. Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally. It, it sounds worse. So I guess take the exact same <laughs> plugin and put it on the other kick drum. Yeah, let's try Because I guess we're offsetting in the wrong direction. <laughs> but this is so weird. Like, we are delaying the original kick because 
the new one has a delay because of the trigger. The original one doesn't, so now we should be delaying it twice. When I was working on some stems the other day, I had to line up. Uh, now they are out snare. of phase in a different way. I think this. I think. I think the latency compensation works actually. With all the delay compensation huh. we've made manually, it sounds the best in mono. Yeah, this. It's this weird. sounds relatively correct. It only sounds a few samples off. And that might be weird EQ. Or just how uh, I designed it. Because um, yeah, the okay. initial kick, the, I leave the synthesized out, uh, kick should have a very fast transient. I will, uh, let's mute that and reset the panning. So shift click. I think they are fine. Yeah, that sounds... There's it's a little got, bit of like a lead on the on the clap, I think, on the acoustic one, but yeah, it looks. Hmm. Oh well, I think it works. So maybe we could gate the original kick a bit to shorten the. I like the Steve Harris gate. It's like the oldest possible plugin, but it's really nice, you know. Oh, we get a nice click. Oh. Wait, what What does shift do? I did shift and I did not... <laughs> did that what solo the group? Oh. Yeah, it solos it, the group. It does by the group. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I don't know. That's <laughs> it's nice. Very, it's very useful. <laughs> I love because how I, every time I load our door, I learn like five features. There's so ah, many features in this DAW. So it inverts inverts the behavior. If I have the group enabled, Using shift ignores the group. If I have it disabled, using shift uses the group. That's so cool. It's like with snapping. Alt changes what happens. Either you turn it on if it was off, or you turn it off if it was on. What does the chat say? The chat says Rob for president. Oh, dear. <laughs> the president of what? <laughs> <laughs> and Lo-Fi says I forgot my instructions. I did. Wow, this kick is incredible. I can't believe how acoustic this original sounds. Is that a real drum? I believe it's all synthesized. <laughs> incredible. Good work, Lo-Fi. These were my instructions pre-stream. It's really nice. <laughs> Let's take a look at the snare. I feel like I'm hearing this in mono. Are you monoing the master? No, I am shouldn't not. be. Okay, it's just so reverberated. Reverberated. Um, let's do what I usually do, which is apply a resonant high pass filter to both cut off the garbage and also boost the body of the drum. Oh, doesn't want to show up so much. I need another. Okay, oh, yeah, that's quite high. We could use yeah, that's a plugin like a... from MDA to pitch it down a bit. Or up. MDA Re Psycho is a very interesting pitch shifter. It only pitches down, but it it's a triggered pitch shifter. It triggers on transients, so it doesn't mess them up. It's specifically made for drums. So if I... It sounds like you've loaded it into a sampler. We can also change yeah. the quality. And it's not uh, inducing delay either, it seems. Yeah. Assuming that's telling the at, truth. At least it's not reporting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what our frequencies look like now. Oh, interesting. Ooh. This sounds acoustic-ish oh, also. What the heck? Good. We'll have to gate that. I'm gonna use a shelf also to, yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is something I don't like. Yeah, More that's highs. nice. That's a bit too. It's a bit much. Much. Yeah. Nice. Okay, I'm not super happy yet. It, it sounds kind of Tomish. Yeah, that's. I think that's because of the heavy reverb. That Cult, could be, yeah. Cult Transient Designer is one of uh, uh, a few Cult plugins that I actually use because it, they, this, this, this is one of the best, if not the best, open source Transient Designer I've seen. It, I've never used a Transient Designer. Wow, that's cool. It basically well, detects, detects transients and applies... Uh, maybe I'll do it before? <laughs> it, That's we need pretty to, good. We need to saturate it because it clips. Uh, maybe let's try chow tape this time. So I had it crashing me on Windows. Uh, not sure on yeah. Linux it was crashing. I think it's just a bit heavy to load. So, yeah, we I have audio. Uh, chow I can still hear oh. you. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, there, there it, is. it is. Look at it. Let's see what it does. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. That's a nice. <laughs> that that yeah. fits. That fits the style, I think. <laughs> that's good stuff. <laughs> My lo-fi says, "Be shaper." Ah, huh. do I have it installed? B shaper's good. <laughs> Lifeline says, will it crash? <laughs> snare. No, actually, it's snared. But I'm... <laughs> I'll maybe back off a little bit. If no, I think I'm gonna apply this transient designer on a kick. Or I will just modify my patch. So, the general amplitude, I can now do this. For example, and now we can simulate compression actually, which is quite interesting. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh -huh. Oh, something's not right. Doesn't sound that great. Okay, now we need to give it more Zam tube. Oh yeah. There's also a bunch of tube models on the right, uh, yeah. which you can play through, but they're not worth checking out now. I think this sounds good, but just for future reference. Yeah, there's lots of options and also an EQ built in. Yep. I wonder if these are like impulse responses or I don't know. I th think so. They sound really good on a raw guitar signal. So I, I think it's some kind of cab simulation too, but it really adds a real world sound to anything you run through it. So probably some kind of cab response. Let's see how or, our kick and snare sound together. Okay, I, f I know what we're missing. Need a bit of top end on that snare, but it yes. does sound good. We do need top end on it. Maybe we can do it with ether. And then gate it, or just make it... Hmm. I'm also like missing some width on the snare's top end. That's obviously... That's starting to get somewhere. Too much, it's too much, but... but... If we can just get the, uh, a bit of that. De the decay on the early reflections really helps you tighten it up. Oh, or rather, lack uh. of. <laughs> also, we can no, turn the down the, the feedbacks. delay knob, right? Yeah, because yeah, that can... delay knob in the early reflections is what determines the time, like the length of the delay. That's the pre-delay, the early, that one, down, down below length. the length. Both of those two. There we um, go, yeah. What if we Thanks disable the tail at all? Oh, I was saying delay instead oh. of DK, my bad. Ah, that's why I couldn't understand what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now we just have a... Okay, no, that's not that's... that. We can increase the feedback. Add some stages. Add a little bit of chorus in S to it. Oh, that's too much. 
No. Too much feedback. It sounds kind of metally now. Ether is power hungry. It is, so it's best not to have 50 instances. My lo-fi also says, distort the shit out of it. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. That was not correct. Distort the shit out of it. <laughs> um, oh, we also have quantizer in here. Snare needs some juice. Yeah, I think maybe if I do this before the tape model, I think we need to slam it a bit more. And maybe it has a tone co co control. If we boost the treble. Okay, I think we'll need to use the bass after that, but what about the compressor inside of Ciao. Might as well turn every knob. Everything. <laughs> okay, that's kind of undoes our transient, which makes sense. But if I make the attack longer, it should. No, it still undoes our transient. Maybe. Maybe some pre EQ into it. Oh. Maybe some post ether pre chow EQ. Hmm. Get post more top in. Because I think it's just muddy mids that are coming through that we're hearing. <laughs> it's kind of loud now. That's so metallic. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's because I gave too much. Um, it's a little bit better, I think. Also, we can randomize the seed. Uh, Fat Girth says, a good I name, think? says that bias is good for adding snap and to turn bias up. It's probably a good idea. Oh. I think that shifts the waveform. I think Ether makes it a little bit too, too chaotic. Hmm. Can we high pass this? High pass the early reflections with that low. That'll help a lot. Oh yeah, yeah that was too much. Getting somewhere mids. Yeah, this is starting yeah, to do something. That's sounding good. Yeah. I think we can... <laughs> it's interesting, like I did such a silly cut in the middle. What if I would mute it, though? Interesting, oh. it doesn't make that big of a difference, even though we're cutting like 18 decibels, right? Yeah, that but it there does shouldn't sound be better. much snare there anyway. Yeah, that's not really... that's interesting. Because a real snare drum, there wouldn't be much sound in that range because you've got the drum body, which resonates like 200-ish hertz, and then you've got the uh, springs on the drum, which should be in the like 3-4K range. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's going to be a that's nice... That's sound and dubstepy. Nice low snare. Oh. A bit of a top end. I think it's getting getting decent. Let's hear it with the kicks. I think it's getting better. It sound, yeah. Transient it is, sounds a, is, seems a bit inconsistent. Yeah. Maybe we need to trigger a little Gion kick patch just for the transient. <laughs> And add a small gate to like cut off the original one. <laughs> Maybe. Or just keep going with the other things. Yeah, I think let's let's leave it be. Yeah. What about the We'll hats? see how it sounds as we go. First thing it's I'll nice do is chirpy. find some see if there's any lows that may not need be needed 
don't see any, but I'll boost the spectrum. Yeah, this is high past. I don't know if I want to do anything with this. What about the second one? This thing I would high pass. I don't think it needs to be, oh. Like, oh. I hear a honk. Oh yeah, there's an ambulance passing by. I'm pretty close to a hospital, so that'll happen. Take me to the hospital records. Man, that's such a good song. <laughs> I think this is pretty pretty okay. I'm gonna make a bus for these. I'll save first. So if I right click on this group header, I can do, oh, yeah, I could if there wasn't any MIDI involved, I guess. There, sometimes, for, for audio tracks, only there's an option called Create Subgroup Bus, which is really useful, but because MIDI is involved, I'll have to make one manually. And I usually call my submixes ca with capital letters, just to make it clear what they are. Differentiate them from sand buses and some other stuff. Okay, now we should have all the drums in here. Yep. So we can also apply some compression or whatever we want later. And let's get into the other sounds. Let's hear what there what is there. Let the pudding roll, yeah, flow through you. Put, put, pudding roll, yeah. I think that uh, bass pluck we could probably do something really cool with, with a lot of distortion. This one? Yeah, use that yeah. as like a drop sound. Lots of distortion and sidechain it from the drums. Yeah, I think that would work cool. That should work really nice. You know what? We could use Chow BYOD. I haven't gotten a chance to use that yet. Oh, oh it doesn't even have the Chow in name. It's just BYOD. Terrible I'm making, branding. <laughs> I'm making a video <laughs> about it. And I've been making it for like a couple months now. Maybe I'll finish it someday. Do we have audio still? Yeah, if you Chat. guys need ambulance samples, let me know. It seems like Chat can still hear us. I can hear you. Okay, where is BYOD then? Oh, there it is. Yeah, I'm always wary because sometimes tracks just, uh, plugins just crash. And yeah, I always expect that. Mm. The bass. And one problem I have is that Things are stealing my keys. Oh uh, yeah, Cardinal would do that all the time. So I can't That's really... been mostly fixed. I can't start my playback. <laughs> I need to click on something else. I'm gonna... Wait, I'm gonna assign my MIDI keyboard to... Darn. <laughs> it's so hard to click on things sometimes. I'm gonna assign my MIDI keyboard to... Yeah, lo-fi. The kick transients are weird. We were trying to sync them up. It seems like our door has synced them and that they're just a couple samples off. We'll come back to the drums at some point. Okay, now I have but a wait, key. I don't think we play. want this to be a uh, endless drum stream. As fun as that would be. I'm all down <laughs> yeah. for sound designing yeah. drums for hours, <clears throat> but... Me as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if it's best for the stream. <laughs> I think my head room is a bit low in the frame. I need to increase my dynamic range because I'm being clipped. I hear some weird clicks. I wonder if the audio is completely bonkers now. Is it... it doesn't sound like X runs. I 
Oh, it's monophone. Oh, oh yeah, listen to that. I guess it is. A, oh, there it is. There's stereo. Now it's stereo. Something is making clicks. I'm not... I, I'm... I'm... Is it BYO? I think it is. Look, it's, it's feeding yeah, some yeah, it's stuff. it's making noise. Oh, wait. Even with it off? What the... There's no input coming in. <laughs> okay, so that was making the sound, though. <laughs> Even... I deleted the... <laughs> It, it's gone. No no noise again. What the hell? I never seen a muted or bypassed plugin to be making sound. And I have used BYOD before. Let's try the VST free version. Maybe that's going to be noise free. Nice. Okay. I don't hear anything so far. Remember to switch yeah. it to stereo. Yeah. And also I can use my space bar. Let's see. No, not consistently. So whatever. I that snare is pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, maybe I'm going to solo the bass for now. Okay, let's make this a little bit bigger. What can we do? Um, we could do guitar ML, for example. For starters. That'll probably sound interesting in parallel. Yeah, I think it's probably... This has a mixer in it, right? Yeah. So we can throw a bunch of different things and then blend them together. Okay, that's quite subtle. Yeah. But we could add something else to make it less subtle. Tube Screamer. Oh yeah, and of course I forgot to mention how brilliant this bass sound design is. So beautiful. Interesting. It is indeed screaming tubes. Let's see. Ronana. What is Ronana? I think that's a neural network. Thing. I mean, double N always means neural networks, right? Guaranteed. Okay, random seed. <laughs> Interesting. I guess these are kind of presets. Huh. I, th I think I want to high pass. The problem is things are not called uh, typically like a high cut, but you have bass cleaner instead of low high pass. Yeah, it sounds like guitarist nonsense. <laughs> yes. So things that people who have no idea what technical terms are use. Just so you guitarists out there know, gain and amplitude are the same thing. <laughs> So yeah, is that, drive. That's Gain, a high drive, pass. and amplitude are all the same word. There's no difference. Yes. <laughs> Bass pro cleaner. Tip, pro tip for all you uh, guitarists out there. <laughs> Let's see what high passing this will do. Oh, I think I... Oh, I connected it a bit, a bit differently. Oh, no, I meant to do that. I think what I need is compressor, really. Um, I think I'll make these zoom out to make them smaller. The interesting thing is that the canvas is of a fixed size. It, it's just the size of the window. <laughs> Work. 
I'm not convinced. Neither am I. It sounds like it's not doing much. We have it if, connected. If anything, let's see. Okay, that changes the sound. Yeah, I think it does. Okay, maybe there's just not, not too much dynamics to begin with. So maybe I'm going to put this at the end after the high pass or big Because there should be a lot more dynamics in the high range. Yeah, especially after we remove the low end. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Now I can hear it working. Or can I? I'm not sure, really. I am kind of suspecting this compressor is permanently in bypass. <laughs> it, it may because be. of some, some, in some, uh, some error. Sorry, it keeps the CPU warm. Okay, we're doing something. So you have a SVF phaser? is a state variable filter. We could use this to like have a notch. Well, we can't really that like, have well. motion. Ah, they don't have... That's interesting. You'd think that they'd have some way to route to controls. It's I not like guitarists any. don't have dials. Hmm. I mean, they usually have buttons that they step on, but that's still something. Oh. We have a crossover crossover filter, so we can ah. split our lows and highs. Actually, it's going for... Oh, right, let's do it. Why are there three outputs? <laughs> because it's separating mids, lows, and highs. Oh, okay, so it is three. Yeah, I see now. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> now we're in business. <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting. Okay. Things are happening now. You can really hear the tube screamer. Sweet. Okay, I've, I think this really needs a, a side chain. I feel like it, it could be... Yeah, I think I'm going to clean it up with an EQ to remove some may... of the... We may want to loop one or two transients of the bass so that we don't have the moving uh, phaser if we're going to be using it as something. Oh, we could use, uh, like, add a phaser and automate it so we have a curve that follows, uh, like, a certain pattern. We can also use ZAM, ZA Multicomp, which is a really, probably good on this. really fine multiband compressor. By default, everything is off. And we can listen to one band. That's the highs. We can put this a bit higher. Now mids. And lows. So now we can turn up the ratios a bit. Turn down the thresholds a bit. Let's see what happens. I think we need to EQ it before doing this, because it's kind of getting really messy. Uh, I think I'll need to cut off lots of things to make this... Yeah, it's getting pretty noisy as it goes through. Yeah. Kind of. Oh, we hear some cars from you, John. Oh, yeah, there's nothing <laughs> I can do about that. I may switch back to, uh, I got the dynamic. I may switch back to that for next time. Get rid of all this sound. Because this might, it sounds nice, but... Let's see what we can do with the shelve. Okay, yeah, I want to... There's a wanna... bunch of... 
There's a bunch of exotic car dealerships by me, so people take them down my street to test drive all the time. <laughs> so, there's oh, a high chance it's a fancy Italian sports car, at least. So, I have all the things to be interrupted by. I guess that's a better one. <laughs> Trying to get rid of some of the yeah, that clicky. I hear it. Yeah, creaky, that's much better. Harshness. Yeah, I guess that's going to be a little bit more pleasant. We skipped an arpeggio. I'm going to move it down. Let's hear the bass with the drums. Yeah, that's yeah. a good dubstep intro. Let's sidechain that. It needs a, a like hectic God intended. Side chain. <laughs> um, <laughs> Compressor. Art or stock compressor does a surprisingly good job. Huh, I haven't used it. I've just been using LSP's sidechain, but I'll have to check it out. Just pick your kick and tick the sidechain box and you're in. really clicky either. Yeah, that's nice. Not sure if the snare should also do it. Probably, I think the actually. Snare, the snare should also cause a sidechain. I'm going to copy the compressor so we have finer control. I'm just going to do this one. So now... Yeah, let's just not make up the game <laughs> twice. Maybe it's interesting. a bit less ratio, but I think it sounds good. I think the kick needs to compress harder than the snare. I think the snare can be down a bit. Yeah. It's still a lot, but... Okay. I guess let's go further. What other sounds are there that we can apply effects to? Mess with... <laughs> Oh, I kind of want to. Oh, that's a make good drop this, sound. Make this Let's side chain our. Oh, it's going for if, the whole thing. We could. What if we literally just take this, so solo everything else, apply ridiculous amounts of distortion to it, and just play this in drums for the drop, <laughs> and then we'll just have like the snare hit, and then silence, and then the kick comes in, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. this already is like the perfect dynamics for it. <laughs> Yeah, just maybe add a bit noise, a bit more noise, distort this a bit more. Yeah, thanks for writing the drop, Lo-Fi. Yeah, we'll do uh, some Carla stuff, some crazy parallel processing on it. It'll sound good. Hmm. Bars and beats. How many bars for the intro? Let's say that's 16 if we want to start. Let's make this be drop. Well, I think bar 17 you want the drop. Oh, right. So we're going to cut this mute uh, before. Oh, we can but... have it swell in on that first hit. Perfect. <laughs> with, with a filter. Yes. And the bass, the first bass. What do we do? We need to mute it after that. What we can do, what if we sidechain that bass? So we duplicate the bass track and then we sidechain that to the big bass. So the bass plays and then the pluck comes back in and then gets taken back out by the big yeah. bass. Yeah. Or not let me duplicate, just uh you could yeah, you could just do a compressor. It a... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there is gonna be <laughs> there's a bigger bass in town now. <laughs> Step aside. Sorry, this... Paul. This track ain't big enough for the two of us. <laughs> What's, uh, what is called two? Okay. Whoa. Uh, 
<laughs> the first base tried to retain, retaliate. So we tried to sabotage. route them together. The track's not big enough for the two of them. <laughs> yes, they tried didn't to tell <laughs> We tried to resolve the complex, the, the conflict peacefully, but it didn't work. Unfortunate. <laughs> So Hativa just asked, are there one crash? No, we have two already. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> now we're using the DAW. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see if we trigger that every single time or just once. And again, just mentioning for the sake of chat, this is probably a pipe wire issue. I would definitely blame pipe wire before I blame our door in this case. Ah, uh, but we have we some crash see. recovery. Ah, uh, good, good. I the crash recovery in our door works great. My only complaint is that it saves over your last project. So if you haven't snapshotted in a while, it'll erase all your progress. So I always copy the project file before I do a recovery, just in case. <laughs> Some a plugin says it crashed as well. Okay. Thanks, plugin. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. Yeah. See you, Rob. Thanks for hanging out. We're gonna miss you. Yep. See you next time. No. Yeah, okay, let's try again. Maybe we can... Maybe I'm gonna insert a new compressor, maybe copying that. <laughs> oh, I made, made it angry, I don't know. No more compressor... reusing. Recycling. Compressor recycling. So we want to cut it off completely. That's good. Yep. I don't know if it's too quiet or my I, I don't know. Yeah, it's very quiet. Cool. <laughs> I think I'm actually going to compress it after all this <laughs> sidechain compression because it like kinda kinda disappears. We have an, another hi hat coming in. Actually, it's a ride. Oh, it's a ride, huh? It sounds like a hi hat to me, but I won't argue. It's nice though. The name doesn't lie. I need to obey the naming. If Lo-Fi says it, <laughs> Lo-Fi says it's a ride. It's a ride, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, are the drums so head. loud or is everything else so quiet? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think the drums are so loud. Also, I'm going to insert a, an X42 digital peak limiter on the master. Maybe, yeah, maybe I want to reset the levels, but I'm going to turn drum, down the drums. Okay, everything is louder now. One more time. Oh, I think that works well. There's like that counterplay is working perfectly. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, Lo-fi says the bass has overtones later, so we'll probably have to chop this a couple times, do some stuff with it. We'll have to be real musicians instead of just <laughs> <laughs> whack idiots. That's working well. I don't know. I'll just put noisifier on this. Distort it some more. What was it called? It was a I'm tap. I'm not familiar. Oh, oh, it is tap. I haven't used it then. I have the tap plugins. There was a plugin that noisified your, your input. 
And it was perfect for this kind of stuff. I think maybe it was C. I must be missing it. There's Noisemaker from Tail. <laughs> yeah, but it's different. Uh. Yeah, I think what I can do is use tap noise. Now, gate this. Even hard gate this. Good Let's idea. See what that does. That could, that could sound nice. Oh yeah, bonus points. That's good. Maybe even more noise. <laughs> and then right. we can apply distortion after to kind of smash the noise together. Yeah. Yeah, maybe do best first. Maybe after. No, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too no. bad yet. Uh, it's kind of steady. Like the best would be nice for. Maybe if it's changing, but this, I guess we could just do a VDQ, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. Because mm -hmm. the noise sh is completely Let's stagnant. Let's use two tape from Air Windows. Maybe five. Now that's yeah. fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess it's a bit loud. Let's see how it plays in the context of everything. Deep flow through you. No, it's not quiet. It's not too loud. I want to mute everything. Oh, I know. Maybe I can do it like that. No, I can't. Ah! Yeah, that's the only way I knew of to move tracks. Oh. So. <laughs> the more you know. So I'm very excited about the fact I can use the arrow keys. <laughs> Something is whack with the level. <laughs> Maybe the sidechain compression takes too long to re to release on the. How do they these two sound together? We can shorten base, this. I think base one has a bit much treble to be together. But oh, wait. I think that's solvable. Uh, base one or base two? Base one, I think it sounds... Because I, I like the tone of base two with all that noise. Although it'll probably be better to clean that one up. Yeah, a little bit. And it also needs to be sidechained with a kick. It does. So maybe first a little bit of EQ. Let's see what we can do to make it a little bit less. I like these these harmonics coming in. So it's probably going to be. Yeah, that kind of makes it a little bit more pleasant. What if we add, add some highs to it instead? Oh yeah, nasty. I think I like this abrasive character of that. I'm liking it a lot, yeah. You know what? I I would like to make it get some jitter to it, like a FM modulation with a noise. So I don't know. Maybe I can do like some chorus. I don't know if we have something like. Someone Is there said, AM? I love chorus on this kind of stuff. You can get really good sounds out of B shaper. <clears throat> yeah, but that's for that's for envelopes, right? There's. Yeah, that lets you create an envelope for the... Although you might be able to LFO it. Hmm. Maybe a ring... No. <laughs> ring mod might work. Frequency modulator. Oh. What, what that... What will that... What does... What will this do? I'm... I'm always... <laughs> 
Uh, ah, okay. This is a what? What huh. does this even do? I think this is a generator. It's not. Okay, that's something special. Let's try some chorus, you know. Yeah, I love. Uh, I usually use the calf chorus, the calf multi chorus. It's actually pretty good. I've been using that lately. It's got all. You can have a bunch of lines, and you can. There's a lot of configuration. It does a yeah, lot of things. Yeah, maybe we could. We could put this before. Before the noise. That sounds okay. good. The only thing I'm worried about is. It's a bit our, wide now. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and also I'm worried about our base coherency. Are the, are, is the I sub was figuring. Are, I was figuring we would send everything to a different sub bus and just process it there. That's what I've been doing lately when I've been working with stuff. Oh, look at this. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, this is what I wanted. It's like yeah. making it <laughs> sound insane. So maybe we'll need to duplicate it to separate the sub. I'm not sure. That'd maybe not. Be a good... The sub seems to be fine. Yeah, it comes through in my headphones fine. Yeah, okay, now we just need the sidechain. Maybe we could use a sidechain the bus. <laughs> So then we can't, you know, like, it would be nice to then have a uh, submix for all the bases so we can compress them together. Yeah, I usually do all the bases to a bus and then out that into a dedicated sidechain bus with hmm. a bunch of other stuff. So I'll have, like, I, I basically route everything into a sidechain bus. And then I'll occasionally have, if I'm doing something particularly crazy, like a house track with tons of, like, swell in the, you know, like the trancey kind of kind of swell stuff. I'll do um, two side chains. One with, one that's a short side chain for things like uh, reverbs and hats and stuff like that. And then a big long uh, release side chain for those. Hmm. I like it's little, I like how it plays right before the kick. Yes, and then it's cut off, and then it comes back. Yeah. That's nice. It's perfect. We should have a noise build <laughs> right up that cuts at the second the bass starts. So like or a like swell a into silence, except for the into the Yeah, or kick. like a, a tiny bit before. So there's like a tiny bit of silence. So yeah, we we're doing a separate music submission stream, Pyrox. For, yes. Uh, Basically, we are, we'll end this stream and everybody is going to automatically be redirected to the music submission stream. We're going to take a few minutes of a break to just, you know, a bathroom break, uh, get some water. Um, yeah, and I just it's a out. good idea for you to also grab, uh, take that opportunity. And then we'll be right back um, with the submission stream. And this is done because lots of people submit tracks and then they submit them to... Uh, music labels and the labels submit the copyright uh, IDs to YouTube and I get copyright claims on the live streams which is kind of annoying so if we can separate that then all the claims go to the music submissions and I don't care but the educational content the main part of the live streams is not affected by that which I think should be nice we need to get rid of that base because um, I mean, it should be me come in, and we should also hype as it, and then, like, I don't know. I have a, I have an idea. I have ideas. Yeah, go ahead. Put implement them. And then we could just have a uh, very quiet sub bass playing, <laughs> like. Minus maybe 6 dB from what the drop sub bass will be, just to kind of fill out some sound. And we don't have anything here. Oh, I wonder if there is still the bug that if I select... <laughs> a part between two, it's gonna crash. I think I, I think there is, it is there. So automation uh. is kind of, kind of a 
uh, I haven't dangerous. encountered that. You you seem to encounter all the bugs. Yeah, that's my I job. <laughs> yeah, right. I was gonna say I swear I do crazy stuff in our door. Actually, Paul tells me that I'm doing things wrong all the time. He's like, "Why would you do it like that?" I'm like, "I don't know." The feature's there. <laughs> I think I also should type as the drums just as well. Maybe I'll go copy the whole filter plugin because the cool thing is it copies the automation too. So now. We can have this. Uh oh. That's a good idea. Maybe give ourselves a little bit more bass here. Oh, that's a low pass. Ah. Uh. Ah, okay, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to give ourselves some bass. Yeah, and then it could swell back up and back down. That might oh, work. Okay. It seems the bug isn't here because I just clicked and selected both and it we would be gone it would be there so I'm gonna be a little bit more relaxed about touching these <laughs> maybe we'll unmute the I think a very good thing in like rearranging something from stems is just to mute everything and then unmute it and compose your new track like using these elements <laughs> We gotta make that into the drop, like all over the place. Whenever there's silence, we need part of that sample. <laughs> also, make wanna... a save just in case oh, while yeah. we're here. I wanna pitch shift this. I wanna Thanks, do some Trancel. crazy stuff with this. <laughs> Low fruit. If we automate the window in MA pitch shift, we can get some really crazy stuff. I really like this plugin because of that. The window is like how long is the uh, is the sequence of audio that it considers when doing the pitch shifting. So you can make it do really wacky stuff. Now I can do very cool, very short. Let's see what that does. It's uncomfortable. Yes. And it reminds me of a. Uh... There's this track, Childhood Memories, by, oh god, who's it by? It's a weird song. Roswell. No, I'm not Very familiar. strange track. Uh, weird vocal processing. Neo Signal does a remix of it? That's crazy. There's a, your homework after the stream, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we need to pause the drums and we need our build up. So let's cut here and now decide how much do we take. Maybe Yeah. And also Yeah, I think that's about hats. right. I think that then you should you should say something in that uh period. We gotta take ah. the sample. So maybe we, we'll just have the noise uh, build up swell here and end and then we have the bass come in uh, maybe we can process something that we already have to make that noise out of it oh there's a delay b baked into that okay maybe no maybe let's uh synthesize ourselves some noise what should mm, we do synthesize noise uh. I think what's it? If you want to make like simple. a simple, yeah, something simple is probably. Oh man, noise builds are kind of weird. 
Uh, I guess Surge. Surge has the noise thing with uh, that's pretty yeah. automatable. So this is non XT. Oh, so we'll non XT. See. We'll see what no. we're. I oh, need XT. Do I install the new version here? LV2. Oh, I need to favorite it. That's a good uh, favorite. It's loading. Not a small plugin. <laughs> Hard agree with uh, Synthavia's yep. comment. There we go. Can I have modern Royal Surge? Yes. Oh, what a beauty. Oh, there it is. I love this skin. It reminds me of Silent. Hmm. So the, long time the, the resolution is still whack. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, it's blurry. It's using like a lower resolution bitmap. I'm not sure why. You could probably just put a uh, envelope on that noise color, right? In the oh yeah, uh, top I would left. do like kind of like a band pass. Yeah, and then you can use a noise oscillator to do something crazy, or not even a no you don't even have to use the sample and hold noise. You can do anything just to get a riser, just remove the okay. pitch from it. I'm gonna make some. Where do we want to start this riser? Somewhere where the bass, like here. Something like that. Yeah, it starts the right time. underneath the the vocal, and then it continues until. Maybe right up to here, so like it ends with this. Oh, can I somehow mark this? And then we can use the. Uh... We should use macros, and then we can automate yeah. the movement easier. Yeah, that would be better than... Oh, it's so nice that Surge has them, all the macros on top of the list, because Vitalium has them buried somewhere deep. You could need to go to, you know, macros between 1 and 192 and something else. Okay, no oscillator, only noise. And let's turn it down. Now we can... Oh, yeah, we can map the macro to volume. Yeah, that's true. And also to color, so we can make it brighter. I think you can send goes. the noise through a filter, too. And you can... That's probably a pretty extreme. The noise color I've found is not a very <laughs> far... We can have a comp filter. Like... <laughs> that oh, that'll go, probably like, be good. Counter, like, we go in a counter direction. Yeah, that's a good idea. And maybe then a band pass after that. Which will kind of follow the the direction. Okay. Um I have no idea what's gonna happen. The perfect noise build. Is he even doing something? I think the noise level's too low. Yeah, we can hear it coming yeah. in. I think you can hold Alt and Shift to move controls while in edit mode. Move controls? Like Weird. if you're if you're in the thing where you're assigning a parameter, I think if you hold Alt and Shift, you can move the parameter without assigning it. I think you just Maybe need not. to do middle mouse click to toggle between being in the assignment mode and not. That works too. So now I made an assignment that doesn't do anything, so I need to delete. No. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gain. <laughs> there we go. Give me gain, man. <laughs> yeah, the comp filter doing its thing. works yeah i maybe can add a little bit of a little bit of reverb to it galactic some compression because it gets louder in the middle i think Something yeah I th longer maybe 
Oh. I think my keyboard disconnected and Ardor Fork dropped it. Some compression. And then maybe bring it back down at the end, the automations. So we get the build up and then the Ah, right. I think it gets a little bit, maybe a little bit too high. That's what I'm thinking. Or we can just use the best to <laughs> tone down the... Or we can just alter our automation. There's the best inside of Surge. You don't even have ah, to right. go out of Surge. That's true. Yeah. We can also go and do this. Just not go as high with our automation and then just go right back. That's pretty cool. That's cool. And the reverb, it sounds like it's like like a snap of a, of a spring reverb. I don't know. Uh, that's funny. Someone, uh, Savavia says, who put a jet sample in this track? It's pretty cool. Umpha and I were talking about this last stream afterwards. A comb filter is a real life effect because it's just a delay. So when a plane passes yep. overhead, you're hearing both the original signal from the jet engine, but you're also hearing it bounce off the ground and reflect back up to you, which causes comb filtering. So that's a, that's literally what you're experiencing with the jet passing overhead. Yeah, and you can test this if you like go up to a wall and just start hissing or take a piece of paper and Yep, you, I can hear that. You, you probably hear the phasing effect happening in physical world just because you're changing the delay, the, the time that the, that the sound will need to reach you bouncing off the paper or the wall. Uh, yeah. Let's see how does this riser work with the rest of the thing. I think it's too loud. Yeah, because the I bass doesn't hit hard. And I think it's still going up a little too loud or a little too high on the automation, but I think it's good. We can back it up a little. I like that it kind of disappears in there and then That's it comes true. back. Yeah, maybe just de best then. Oh, it's it's already there, but maybe I need it to make it stronger. Because yeah, I Oh, I can turn down the depth so it does more things. Uh we can monitor it. Hmm. Can I just uh, Yeah. Yeah, it's doing lots of stuff. Yeah, that sounds a lot less maybe, intense. Maybe I'll put the dynamics afterwards so it's still kinda Yeah, that's a good idea. Well you lose a lot of dynamics to the device. It's funny because I made the reverb like super wide and it it's an interesting effect when the the mid signal kind of disappears and all we're left with is this like 200% wide noise reverb tail. Okay, I think this should do. Maybe the vocals are also too loud because we need a contrast with this drop. What I usually do is I just put an ace amplifier after the limiter on the master, and then I'll just turn it down 3 dB or so when I'm not in a drop. And then oh. I just turn it back up. Yeah, that's a good idea too. Uh, ace amplifier. Yeah, that's a simple plugin. Yeah, that, this is a, actually a very good uh, thing to do. I do, do. it post limiter so that the limiter, so that you get the peaks limited but then it brings the whole signal down still 
Oh. Yeah. Hmm. I I hope to like use all the all the dynamics I can get. Don't want to waste them. So also, it would make sense to like I don't know. Let's maybe yeah, try it first. I, I try not to hit the limiter too hard, anyways. So it's usually just smoothing out peaks more than it's. I, I do maybe one dB of limiting in a track at most, even in like heavy dubstep <laughs> tracks. I think we'd have cool. some fun with um, something should come in right here. We bar should get 24. yeah bar twenty five. We this is where we should be throwing the vocal sample of you saying putting whatever everywhere. Oh, yeah. Every gap should have a weird vocal sample in it. <laughs> so we, so we need to <laughs> this side is chain. how you make dubstep. <laughs> oh, we should. Be Right, we should make the um, vocal chops out of that. Ninjas too were excellent for that. Yeah, Wonky mentions using the master fader. I actually intentionally use uh, ace amplifiers everywhere so that I can automate volume and still have access to the actual fader for my mixing stage. Then I don't have to basically give up the mixer on the fader. My I don't see many people do this. I find that kind of interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, because huh. you're editing the window. You're automating it. Yeah, I'm trying to get the automation here because hey, I'm going to copy the automation. Why am I doing this again? No need to redo it. Just copy and paste. Oh. Paste it here. Paste it here. That works pretty well. Yeah, I guess we're kind of running out of time, so. Yeah, we definitely are. Not that much we can do. We didn't even use our new setup. Oh, no. Yeah, maybe you want to do something. Yeah, I guess I will. Go crazy. Sweet, I'm in control now. It's this is my stream. All right, let's see here. So let's let's chop up this vocal. That'll be fun. So let's get let's get this chop about here. I'm just gonna repeat it in three times. The oh most yeah, generic dubstep way. Yes, perfect. You can now also pitch we're making shift. music. Pitch shift. Yeah, good audio. idea. Yeah, so let's do... Oh. Come on, unselect them. There it goes. Mm. So my edit? pitch... It, oh, it is edit. You're right. No, no, no. It was no, in the region. In here, now edit. edit. And here, pitch shift. My cousin's calling me. And pitch shift. Alt 8 is this... Ah, uh, yeah, there it is. So it's then the let's go says. down five semitones, down three semitones. And that'll probably be Oh, sorry, be I touched good. the mouse. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I didn't even notice. <laughs> Wanaki asks, what software are you guys are using to share control over the session? We're using uh, Rust Desk. <laughs> is an open source alternative to something like TeamViewer. So let's... Rust Desk. It's amazing. I'm gonna get this just so I can remove EQ this even more. Let's go after. Just for these drop sections. I gotta get I'll used just hit to this S for delay. You. Yeah, good call. Uh, <laughs> Alt 1 is my... Yes, there we go. So I can disable all that, and then we can go... So this one I want on, this one I want off up here. There we go. Okay, and then these all I want to disable, if I can. Oh, that Alt, flipped them. Alt-1. 
Ah, yeah. I it, gotta it select them one by so. one. Yep. All right. Cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Let's get. I was like, oh, oh, where's all my plugins I'm used to? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it feels pretty responsive. So you like you, you got lost and forgot you're not on your own computer. Yet. Exactly. That all right, the LV2. Cool. There we go. Then let's get. Oops. Let's get you open. The really cool thing about LSP. EQ is that you can offset all the all the frequencies with the pitch uh, correction knob. Actually, it's where is it? It's uh, it's somewhere there. Yeah, I was messing with it with. Um... You can automate that to make like formant movement. That's really cool. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, let and me make a weird bell for this shape. Track. Make a weird bell shape. This is already going to sound weird. I'm not even listening to it, and I can tell it's going to sound weird. <laughs> That's good. Get weirdness in the top range so it's not really competing with the bass. A little gain on there. <laughs> oh. So it's Fanaki? Or Fanaik? Fanaik? Sweet. Then let's get. What if I make these the ones active and then it... Because I think I only want it when we've got bass coming through. So if we chop these up, flip them. So now it's only filtered when the bass is happening. a bit more gain on this you can hear it and then we should just basically be doing this in all these gaps it'll <laughs> sound hilarious so let's go <laughs> this one is muted so you're gonna chop it up and unmute parts I'm actually going to bring it down into this one with the processing on it no actually because it's going to be no bass here so there's, there's tons of cool sounds that like one of these parts of. <laughs> what if you like dragged parts of the synth stuff onto the following through, flowing through your track? Oh, like just so like processing. processing? Yeah, yeah, so like yeah, use yeah, the processing of the like uh, let's grab the mixer. EUE or something like. Yeah. Where's our? So that was our base two is the big one. So yeah. do we want base one or base two? Let's grab this. Let's grab this chorus. This chorus is nutty. Yeah. Uh, so that's the original sample. This is the... And we can automate the, like, if it's on or off, I believe. We'll do it post. Uh, oh, that's, that's the recorder. Record there we go. Uh, is it this track? It's the second one. Or is oh, it, you're right. I don't know which one you have selected. Uh, oh, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, still soloed. There we go. You can also reverse stuff. That's a good idea. I think it's Alt 4. I think Alt 4 is the shortcut. That's good. That's good. That's exactly where that should be. So alt. Let's let's just duplicate this out here and reverse it between these two. So alt four. You said let's try I it. I think yeah. it did it. That looks right. That's cool. <laughs> you can now also we're making good progress. T. You can hit T for time stretch and use oh, that yeah. to like you know. Like make it long and then chop up some pieces and it sounds like an ambient pad and <laughs> it's just... Have you used a Paul X stretch ever? Oh, I did it's not. It's pretty crazy. 
It's, um, it's a plugin, right? Stretch. Crisp monophonic instrument. Would you say you are a crisp monophonic instrument? I think I am. That's good. <laughs> awesome. That's very good. We're oh. making good progress now. <laughs> But yeah, Paul X stretch is crazy. It'll stretch things. It'll stretch a five second sample to like 10 hours. It's great for soundscapes. <laughs> I'd make it a little bit louder, but it's perfect. <laughs> yes. This is everything that I could ask for. All right, and let's take this section of this. You want to copy it? You can copy it it with automation. Right before, right at the end of this, so it. Oh, whoops. Grab. Oh, this is the one with it. We just we need to probably, do this through the rest of the track. Should, yeah, we should probably start heading towards uh, the submissions. Yeah. So like, I think you're right. But this is really fun. Let's get... I'm just going to compress the heck out of this. Yes. You know, I'm going to limit it. We're going to go nuts. Oh, yeah. Uh, DPL, and you can just... Uh, like 40 dB again. Give it... Yeah, no give fear. It, and then you can move Looking the threshold sharp. a bit lower. Give it true peak, and we'll lower the volume some Yeah. More. Oh, that's not where we're going. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing. That's that sounding thing. good. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, we have five minutes to print this. All right, for the you festival. Back control. Okay. Everybody ready! Woo! Off. <laughs> oh, it's so perfect. <laughs> Whoa. And it can just go on and on. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Epic sensor beep fail. I don't know how it failed, but I guess it was fun. Oh, we can't hear the sensor. That makes sense. I didn't realize. But now that he mentions it, yes, I do not hear the sensor. No, you should be. Wow. Oh, well. Sis. Do you hear beeps? Nope. No beeps. No beeps. Too bad. I don't know why. Unfa. Uncensored. (laughs) Live on YouTube. (laughs) Don't bring your kids to this one. (laughs) (laughs) Lads. (laughs) Oh, Oh my Christ. All right. So, yeah, you want to do some last second things and then we'll get to we'll take our break and go to uh, submissions. I don't know. We can do one silly thing and that is put master me on master. (laughs) Oh, good call. Then we're done. Then we've mastered our track. We just it's it's ready. Radio ready. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, are we an expert? Uh, music general. Am I an expert? I'm an expert. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of controls. Too much for me. Uh, uh, okay, I don't know okay. about if I'm an expert anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually pulling... Pulling out, um, we probably don't need to use the DPL after the whip, after thing, after this.
We're going to have to finish this and release this for sure. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I think I'm going to for sure put this into the the, the warm-up <laughs> playlist at <laughs> random. <laughs> Andre Vitula says, wow, mastering is so easy. <laughs> Fanaki says, Anfa gone wrong. I hope I'm pronouncing names correctly. All right, let's save this. And uh, uh, we'll be right back in the second stream where we'll cover, play all the music submissions. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 